All right, hey everybody. Uh, so this is going to be uh, another lecture from, or l more information about predicate derivations. This time we're going to learn a new rule called existential in. Uh, that's our second new rule that we'll be learning. So uh, that's the plan for this uh, video. Okay, here's what existential in looks like. Uh, this format should look a little bit more familiar now that you've seen universal out. Um, here's what it says. It says where v is any variable and c is any constant, so a, b, c, right, d, e, f, whatever. Uh, and f, v, again, is any formula. And f, c is that same formula that results when you replace the constant for every occurrence uh, of v that's free in f, v. We have this rule. That is, it says, um, if we know that some particular individual has property f, f then we know that there's something that has that property. So basically, this is a way of introducing an existential quantifier um, into a formula. Again, probably not the easiest thing to look at to see the rule this way. So let's look at some examples and see if that clears things up. Here's the simplest case. Suppose you know uh, on one of your lines in the proof that A has property F or FA. Existential in says the following. It says you can replace that name, that constant A, with any variable you like, and then stick an existential quantifier on the front of the formula that has the, the same variable. So for instance, you can replace the a with an x and stick an existential quantifier with an x, or with a y, or with a z. And essentially this says, if you know that a has property f, then you know that something has property f. That should strike you as plausible. Let's look at some more examples. Suppose you know that a is f and a is g. What can you then conclude? Well, you can conclude this. You can conclude that something has property f and g. Some y has property f and g. Again, we're replacing the constant, in this case a, with a variable, and then putting an existential quantifier on it. So this should sort of be a little bit like doing universal out in reverse, is essentially what the rule is saying. What about a case like this? Suppose we know that B, whoever that is, bears the R relation to K. Again, wh whoever that is. Existential in allows a few different things here. On the one hand, you could do this. You could take your B as your constant and replace the B with a variable, either X, Y, or Z, and stick an existential quantifier on the front. But it also would allow you to have chosen the other constant, the K constant. Right? So you could have done existential in using k instead of the b. And so just to see what, what this comes to, if you know that r, b, k, suppose that this is, again, the loves relationship r, and this says b loves k, then you can either infer from that that something loves k, namely b, or that b loves something, namely k. And either of those are correct applications of our existential in rule. Okay, now suppose uh, you had gone from this to this formula here. That's the way you'd apply to existential in. And so you were left with something like this. Note you can apply existential in again to replace the B now. So existential in would allow you to do this. Put an existential Y and replace the B with a Y, or a Z and replace the B with a Z. You can't put an X because then that's ambiguous which quantifier goes to which, uh, which individual here, but you can do a Y or a Z. And so essentially from here, with two applications of existential in, first to here and then to here, we can infer that because B loves K, something loves something. And that should strike you as plausible. That's exactly what you can infer. All right, what about a case like this? What can we do here? Well might surprise you, but we can get any of three things. The first one's maybe pretty obvious. We replace both A's with X's and can put an existential quantifier. So this says if you know that A loves, its, a, loves a, then you know that something loves itself. But notice, and this is sort of, again, surprising maybe, you don't have to replace every occurrence of A with a variable to get a well-formed formula. So if we know that A loves A, we also know that something loves A namely A itself. We also know that A loves something, again, namely A itself. 
So all three of these are acceptable applications of existential in. Which one you should use just depends on the context of your, your derivation and what's going to be most useful to you. Hopefully it makes some sense now uh, after looking at those examples. Again, if you know that some particular individual with a name has a property, then you know that something has that property. Uh, so if you know that I, Professor Dunn, am a professor, uh, then you know that something is a professor. And that's what existential in is allowing us to, to do. All right, uh, all we've got uh, left to do on existential in is just see some example arguments. So I'll go ahead and make another video for that, uh, just as we did before. And uh, then we'll introduce a new rule after we're done with that. Bye.